This video is sponsored by Altium. In this module, we will learn about the testing process. First of all, we will have an overview of the entire module. This module has five major steps. In the first step, we will load the model. For that, we will use the wait file and the load the train UNet model. In the previous module, we have trained the UNet on the original dataset and the augmented dataset. Here we have two wait files, and the entire process will be on the wait files. And in the end, we will compare their performance. In the second step, we will load the test dataset from which images will be used. And in the third step, we will predict the mask for these images. While predicting the mask, we will also calculate the FPS, and in the last step, we will evaluate the mask to compare with the predicted mask, and the ground truth mask, and also calculate different matrix scores. This video will teach us how to predict the mask for the test images. Here we have the input image, and we'll give the image to the model and predict the mask. We have a binary mask for the input image. After that, we will move on to the Jupyter Notebook. Open Jupyter Notebook, and in the notebook, we will follow four major steps. We will load the model and the test data set in the first step, specifically the test images. Next, we will use test images and then predict their mass. And finally, we will calculate the FPS, that is frame per second, which means the number of the frames that the model can process in a second. This also means calculating the speed of the model. Before moving on to coding, let's look at some data sets and folders. So first of all, we have the files folder here, which stores the load file and the wait file. And inside this folder, we have two more subfolders. Aug refers to augmented and non-aug refers to non-augmented or the original data set. In the aug folder, we have load and wait files. When the unit is trained on the augmented data set, it generates a load file and wait file. The second folder, non-aug, contains the CSV file and the wait file, and these are generated when the model is trained on the original data set. Next, we have the test folder that contains test images and test masks, and each folder contains 20 items. We can see some of the test images and the height and the width of these test images, and their masks are 768 by 512. All these images and their masks have the same size. This video is sponsored by Altium the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Now let's move on to the coding part. So first of all, we will import all the required libraries. Our first library is the OS, refers to the operating system library. So this library will help us to create some folders, join paths, and the rest of the other things. The second library is the time library, and it will help us to calculate the FPS frames per second. Next is the NumPy library, which is used to perform a mathematical operation on the NumPy array. And the fourth library is a CV2 that refers to the OpenCV, used to read the images, resize them, and write the images back to the disk. Our next library is the globe. Inside the globe, Globe, we will give it a path, extracting all the files and the paths inside that specific folder. Next is the TQDM, which refers to the progress bar that will help us to know how many iterations are done, how many iterations are left, and how much time it will take to complete the entire loop. And our last library is TensorFlow. So the entire unit is implemented in TensorFlow, and we will now execute this cell. And it is executed successfully without any error. After that, we will seed our environment. And the seeding is the same as what we are using for training. We have to ensure that all seeding numbers and values and the rest of the things related to seeding should remain the same in the training and testing of the model. This will ensure that the model is reproducible and has the same randomness during the training and testing. Let us execute this cell and we will set two hyperparameters, height and width. So the height of the images and their masks is 768 pixels and the width is 512 pixels. Then execute this. Next we must set some paths and use the original data set. The first step here is to set the data set path. We will type data 
subset path equals to test. Next will be our safe path, and that is where we will save the predicted mask. For that, we will type safe path equals to prediction, and the folder prediction name. And inside prediction, we have another folder, non-aug, which is the folder in which we will save the mask. And our next part will be the model path, the path to our weight file that is h5 file. And the path for the weight file inside the file folder is files non-aug, unit non-aug, h5. Now let's execute them. We can see we have a safe path, but the safe path does not exist here. That's why we need to write a function to help create the safe path folder, the prediction slash non-aug. So let us write a function called create dir, and we'll give a path as the argument to this function. And path refers to the path which we want to create. Then we will check if this path exists or not. We will type if not os.path.exists. So if this path does not exist, that is why as we say not, that means path does not exist. Then create the path. This way, we will create the path if it does not exist. This function is done and we will execute it. After that, we will call this function here and we're going to give it the safe path. When we execute this function, then in the file manager, we will have our prediction folder. And inside the prediction, we will have a non-aug folder. So let's execute. Now if I show you my file manager, we can see we have a folder prediction. And inside prediction, we have non-aug because we will use the original dataset wait file. Now let's move back to the code. As we have successfully created the folder, the next task is to load the model. For that, we will type model equals to tf, that is tensorflow, dot keras. That is the higher level API based on the tensorflow and after that models and then finally load model. And inside the load model function, we will give the model path, the path to the h5 file. So we have loaded our model to see if the cell is executed without error. Now we need to see the memory of this model. Here we can see the model's memory. The name of the model is unet, which shows its layer output shape and the rest of the other things. We can see the input layer has a shape of 768 by 512 by 3, and we need to ensure that we give this input shape to the model because the model will accept this input shape only. And if we go to the end of this, we can see the mask. It's the same shape, and the number of channels is different here. Now our next task will be to load the test images. We will type text x and x refers to images. Now here we will use our globe function and inside the globe we will give it a path, specifically a pattern of the path. Here we will use os.path.join to ensure that this code is OS independent to work on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So first of all we will type the dataset path. So we need to load all the images inside this test folder. We have images and inside we have 20 images. So we need to extract the path for these 20 images. We will type images, and after images, we will have a star, which means all the images we want. So this is test x, and the globe and everything will return a path list. We don't have a list, so we will sort it in a specific order. Next, let's find out the length of the list. We will type test images and length text x, and execute the cell. We can see it has loaded 20 images and we know we only have 20 images in our folder. Now let's check the path of the first image. Test x0. The path for the image at index 0 is test images 101 underscore 0 dot png. This shows we have successfully loaded the test images. Now our next task is to predict the mask and calculate FPS. The first step is to initialize an empty list called time taken. And this list is used to hold the time that the model has taken to predict the mask. And we're going to do this for all T0 images. And after the process is done, we will find the mean time it takes to load the image. And from the meantime, we will find the FPS. This is how our list is initialized. And we will have a loop here for X in TQDM. As here, TQDM is a progress bar. We will type test X, where X will be the individual path. Our next task is to extract the name 101 underscore 0 dot PNG, because we need a name to save the mask. We will type name equals to X dot split. So we will split the string based on the slash. As we know, slash is different in Windows, Linux, and Mac. So first of all, we use the path and then set the slash accordingly. But for Windows, we can put this double slash. Now execute this loop, then print the name here. We can see what happens when we run this code. With this x dot split, we have a list as the string is converted into a list, it is split. Then we have test images and then the name of the file. So we need to extract the name of the file. So we will type minus one. And I can see we have the name with the extension, this task is done. The next task is to read the image and normalize it. So here for this task, we will use an open CV, and X is the path for the image, and we will read it as an RGB image. 
Now we can normalize all the pixels by dividing them by 255, which is the maximum pixel value. When dividing the image pixels by 255, ensure all the pixels' values are in the range of 0 and 1. Now we have our image, test x, as a NumPy array, and we know the model takes images in the form of the batch. This shows we have one image that we, a batch of an image. We can see the shape of this image on the array that is 768 by 512 by 3. Now if we need to make a batch, we will type x equals to np dot expand dims. We will expand its dimension to zero and then print the shape. Here we can see it's a batch of one image. As we know, when it predicts the mask, it also has the batch of one image. But the number of channels will differ. After we have read the image, we will predict the mask and note the starting time. This function will give time in seconds. We will note the seconds once it starts. We will type p, which is predicted mask, and type model.predicts and x is the image input. We will type total time equals to time dot time. Then we can subtract it with the start time of the initial time through total time. We'll have the number of seconds it takes. After that, we will type time taken dot append total time. Now we will see the shape of p, the predicted mask. As it is executing, we can see the mask's shape is one. That is a batch of one. Height 768, width 512, and number of channels is one. Now we have the required masks. And we will extract the first mask from here because this batch contains only one mask. Mask. So we can type 0 here, and the time part is also done. Now we need to save the mask. For that, we will save the first image and then multiply all the pixels of the predicted mask by 255. The P, that is the predicted mask, goes through the sigmoid activation function, and this function will give us a value in the range of 0 and 1. So it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.9. That's why we will multiply all those values by 255 and convert those values into the range of 0 and 255. Then save those masks with the help help of cv2 as this function needs a path. For that, we will type os.path.join. So first of all, the save path, then name, and then array of the mask, and then execute it. This will lead us to the mask in this prediction folder, non-aug. It shows the first mask with the same height, width, and name. As we can see, it is grayish, and in some areas, it is white. The white area is according to the predicted mask, but we haven't applied the threshold here. Let's move on to the next task. But before that, I'll remove this break statement from here. This is how the mask looks without thresholding for all the images, and all the masks without thresholding. It shows how the input image looks and which areas are white and black. The white area indicates the foreground class, and the black color indicates the background class. So in this image, it is perfectly masked in the face, but in some images, it is not that appropriate. For that, we can apply a threshold layer, and we will type P should be greater than 0.5 and execute it. This time, we have applied thresholds, and there will be two classes background and the foreground. So white color indicates the foreground class, and black indicates the background class. These are our binary masks predicted by our model, which is trained on the original data set. After prediction, we need to calculate the FPS, but first we need to calculate the mean time and then calculate FPS. We will type 1 divided by mean time and execute this on the system. After that, we will print both these values in the mean time and the mean FPS. Here we can see the mean time is 0.06, mean FPS is 15.5, it shows that the image size is large because of the low FPS, but if we decrease the input size, the FPS will increase. That is how the process for predicting the mask works. We will do the same, but with different weights files. We have two weights files and have tried the non-augmented, which is the original dataset weight file. Next is the mask using the augmented weight file. So let's run that part of the code. It shows all files here, and we will stop this task, but we will save it first, then shut it down because these files require GPU and every other resource. For that, we will delegate those resources and run another file. This is how the predicted mask augmented dataset Set. In this procedure, everything is the same but the safe path. Now this time, our folder will be prediction slash aug. We will type the path files aug unit dash aug dot h5. These are the changes we need to make. The rest will remain the same. Then execute it and we can see that the loops start to run and it's 20. We can also see the weight and the model is loaded here. Here it has 3 FPS, which is a little low, but we can run it again. And it will still show the same FPS. But we need to check the predicted mask, and inside the folder prediction, we have the AUG. It shows the prediction mask, which the model trained on the augmented dataset predicts. And so, I believe the model trained on augmented dataset will have better performance when compared with the non-augmented or the original dataset. Now, if we see the mask, it looks good even if it is showing the eyes too. But some masks like this are not good, even in the augmented one. This indicates that our model still lacks in some places. This is it. and in the next video we will learn to evaluate the performance of these masks against the ground truth.